You're listening to Blue Collar CEO, the podcast that's all about helping you build a better, more profitable, and more sustainable home service business. Each week, we'll cover a different topic that will help enable your company to move forward to success. And here's your host, Ryan Redding. What is up, Blue Collar CEOs? It's Ryan, and awesome to be with you again today. I'm getting ready to introduce you to Mary Geiger. Mary uh, is the owner of a company called All About the Pipes Plumbing. All about the pipes. Uh, she's basically like crazy story. Did not work in the trades. Um, her ex husband was in an HVAC, and then she started getting into accounting, and then she accidentally found herself owning a plumbing company just at the end of 2017. Uh, so we're going to be talking a lot about her story, about how she thinks about leadership and evolving to stress and chaos, uh, and what it's like to like run a business, especially coming into something that you may or may not have a lot of experience in, and you're trying to learn a lot of things. But uh, a lot of really good conversations, a really sweet human. But let me shut up and introduce you to Mary. Mary, I am really glad we were able to get you on the show because I know you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of monkeys to wrangle in your world. But for those who maybe don't yet know who you are. Can, you mind, can we just start there? Who are you and what do you do? My name is Mary Geiger. I am the chief ringleader of All About the Pipes Plumbing. I have got five fantastic guys that work for me who I couldn't be more blessed to have. I've owned the company since 2017. I've worked for the company since 2007. And it's it's a story within itself. Yeah, I'm curious because you... It, you didn't exactly grow up in the trades. How did you end up working for the company and then eventually buying it? Okay. Well, um, my father was a sheet metal worker my entire life. Uh, I originally was supposed to be a nurse, but I went down a different avenue. I worked in the accounting and the banking industry for many, many years, met my husband He owned an HVAC company, worked with him for about 10 years after our our marriage uh, dissolved. I still worked in the accounting industry, but was very, very disillusioned. When your kids tell everybody that you have five seasons in your house, spring, summer, winter, Mm -hmm. fall, and tax season, Mm -hmm. and that we don't see our mom from February 15th till April 15th, um, there's a lot of truth in that. And I felt I needed to make a career change. I promptly quit my job on April 15th, um, working for a tax accountant and um, opened up the newspaper and saw that there was a plumbing company looking for an operations manager. Shoot, I could do that in my sleep. I ran my ex-husband's <laughs> company for him. I, I worked for him. So I interviewed with the previous owners of the company and they took me in the back in the shop and showed me all different parts and fittings and asked me how they worked. And I think I surprised them a little bit that I actually knew what the pipe was, what the fittings were and how they were used and the proper use of them. So that started a journey for 10 years where I worked for the previous owner, but he, um, his family had some, catastrophic illnesses. And he just, Mm. he had to step away to take care of family. So he came to me and said, buy the company. Nope. (laughs) Not my circus, not my monkeys. So finally he came in and the Tuesday after Labor Day in 2017, he says, you've got five minutes to decide whether or not you're going to buy this company. Because if not, I'm shutting the doors. Oh my, oh my. So kind of in that instant, as a single mom working a full-time two and two part-time jobs, it's like, Oh crap. What am I going to do for a job? What, uh, oops, sorry about that. Yeah. What am I going to do for a job? What, what are the guys that are working for us going to do for jobs? So in a moment of weakness, I agreed. And seven years later, here we are. Um, it's been a very interesting ride. There have been, it's been like a roller coaster, so many ups and downs, 
But to be honest with you, I, I wouldn't trade it. I have such wonderful people and my customers aren't just customers. A lot of them are like family. They know me on a first name basis. They'll they'll say, call and talk to Mary or they'll call and, and just say, hey, this is Pete. I don't know exactly who it is on the phone or, hey, this is John or this is Candace. They don't even have to tell me their last names and I know who they are or I'll see their phone number come up on the phone and I'll know who they are. So hmm. it's really wonderful that we have formed such wonderful relationships with our clientele, not just, oh, call them they're a plumber, but, you know, it, it, it's been pretty good. Uh, sharing the births of different, sharing yeah. deaths. I can't tell you how many times we've, this is kind of on a morbid side, but we've been called to take care of a leak or a clog and we get there and a spouse or a family member has just passed away and they're waiting for the mortuary to come pick them up. And they need us to perform an emergency drain cleaning, et cetera, because they're about to be inundated with people. It's just stuff like that. It's, it's having great relationship with my customers and my That's- people. Yeah, that's, a, I mean, that, that's a really like sobering way to think about kind of, especially the, the role that you have the opportunity to play in the community that you serve. How, so you have an interesting background, both between the HVAC experience, your kind of tax accounting experience, your operations experience, and now like ownership. In what ways do you, do you feel like each of those seasons gave you skills and experience that you're able to leverage in your position now that without it might make owning a business a little bit more challenging. To be honest with you, to own a business that you do not know how to have practical hands-on experience, know how the processes work, you're setting yourself up for failure. The good thing about me working with my ex-husband is I had to be hands-on. I had a week-old baby in a carrier, and I'm soldering pipe. We lived up north at the time, so we have uh, baseboard radiators. So I'm installing baseboard radiators. I'm installing furnaces and boilers and helping him that it really helped me understand how the plumbing side of it worked help me understand how the HVAC side of it worked. But by the same token, I also had to handle the office side of it. So it was getting my feet wet, teaching me the processes and how everything worked, understanding how, you know, you have to have venting. If your fixtures can't breathe, they're not gonna work. Um, Understanding fall and slope. You can't have a flat drain line because if you do, your waste is just going to sit. It has to have a quarter inch of slope for every foot to be able to slide on out to the street. You know, it's just different stuff like that, that by working with him for 11 years, it gave me the hands-on physical experience. Plus, working in the accounting field, working in the banking field, it gave me the financial understanding to be able to handle all the taxes, all the payroll and everything that goes with the back end. Yeah, um, probably you probably had a certain like comfort with numbers in general, you know, like Yeah, yeah, I think a comma or decimal probably didn't throw you off too much cuz you you've seen it once or twice. How was it being so maybe maybe less true in accounting and not not to gender norms different industries but it would not be a stretch to say that women are underrepresented in the trades how that has is your how has your position within the company owning company as a female whose mm-hmm. background predominantly has not been like you didn't grow up going to a votech you didn't you know you didn't work for your dad like on his shop right you it was all adjacent, but it wasn't a direct linear path. To what degree have you experienced frustration or obstacles or resistance in your role leading the company, both with leading the team, attracting employees, navigating the company, just in general, 
as a female or do you feel like for every downside there was to being a woman there was also an advantage that most people who are men might not for themselves experience so we had a few employees um under the previous ownership there were two in particular that just absolutely had zero respect whatsoever. And no matter what I tried to do, no matter what I did, they, they just, we bucked heads every step of the way. So when I bought the company, of course, they went elsewhere, which was fine. But for the most part, I have been blessed with some wonderful men in the field that have mentored me. I've got uh, Rick McCoy, Bill Vaca, uh, Rick Hunter. Those guys have been fantastic. That if I have a question or something I don't understand, you know, these people are very, very seasoned, have been in the industry hands over fists longer than I have. And to be able to pull on the knowledge of those people and them willing to help me as a woman in their industry so that I'm successful has really been very, very refreshing. I've had more positive notes being a woman in the industry than I have had negative. The, the, it, it does come from with this downside, people disrespecting me going, you're a woman. What do you possibly know? Huh. Yeah. More than you think. But <laughs> It's Some, learning how to bite my tongue and, and suck it up, Buttercup. Put on my big girl panties and just go. All right, he's yeah, just one of those shows. Let's just show him by yeah. actions and by reputation what we can do and what we know. I agree. It's it's both sad that that reality exists, and also makes me really damn proud to know people like you, uh, Stephanie Allen at Airworks out in California. You have. Cassie Pound and Leslie Harpool, both in Oklahoma. Like you, there's some really incredible women. Oh, mm-hmm. and I know I like uh, Stephanie Postel. I'm not leaving you off this list too. Like there's there's so many women um, in the trades now, mm-hmm. leading companies, leading departments, like making a name for themselves, not just in their town but in the industry. Right. That five years ago, ten years ago. Yeah, uh, th- there were not nearly the people that were engaged, and so like even with uh, organizations like Lady Titans or Women in HACR, who are focused all about like providing platform to giving voice and giving space for women in the trades, it's mm-hmm. it's a great time um, for people who have not historically been represented to start being more represented. Um, so yeah, it's super cool. What do you feel like? So as, uh, I mean, thinking about the the length of time that you stepped into owning the business, arguably was one of the most disruptive times in our generation's lifetime, right? Because you have this little thing in the middle called COVID. Oh my God. uh, (laughs) Public health aside, politics aside, it dramatically impacted uh, consumer behavior. It dramatically impacted the workforce. It dramatically imp- impacted the economy at large. So this not not to make it a political statement or one thing or another, but it is clear that this was a really volatile, disruptive time that uh, not to mitigate the harm that a lot of people had, but a lot of businesses thrived in the wake of COVID. A lot of businesses really struggled in the wake of COVID. Here you are a couple years into the business when this is going on. How how did you adapt to that sort of challenge in a business you didn't know super well and the role you didn't know super well when the whole world is going to hell in a handbasket? Like, what was that like for you? Terrifying. Yeah. Absolutely terrifying. Uh, I'm sitting here seeing this world catastrophe happen playing out in front of my eyes. And I'm seeing all of these people dying. As a matter of fact, my daughter-in-law's sister, who was 26 years old, lost her life to COVID. So it's Mm. impacted us directly. Yeah, sorry. so sorry. Um, You're good. But no, it's, I don't 
don't think I've gotten off of that uh, one foot on a banana oil banana peel feeling yet. <laughs> uh, I had just bought the company. We opened officially under us January 2nd, 2018, uh, March, 2020. I, you know, I don't know what possessed me, but end of January, beginning of February, um, a friend of mine came to me and said, we need to get you virtual. You need to do everything virtual. You need to get rid of your landlines and go to cell phones. And I'm not somebody that really likes a lot of technology. And I, I really struggle with change. Um, but I embraced their recommendations. So we eliminated the landlines. We, uh, Converted the phone to a cell phone. This way, customers can text me. They can send me pictures. They can communicate with me something other than vocally on the phone. And then we converted all of our, our invoicing, our calendars, everything to virtual. This could only be the grace of God blessing me, knowing what was coming forward, because by the time COVID hit mid-April, and everything shut down, my crew were already up and running on a virtual platform. Oh, that's so cool. uh, once we finally got the approval that we were essential services and we could work, uh, we made sure that we had the special masks in place, all the sanitizers in place. Good thing I can sew because <laughs> I was sewing masks left and right. Um It was a whirlwind. It was terrifying. I don't want to say it was exciting because it wasn't, but it was one of those where you had to really dig deep. You, you yeah. really had to say, what am I going to, because I had, I had an employee that kind of went off the deep end and went off the grid for about six weeks. We had no idea where they were at, what they were doing, what was going on with them? And then out of the blue, they said, can I come back to work? Well, okay. Um, other ones like Dustin and Chris, they, they jumped in, embraced it. And, you know, granted our call volume dropped by probably two thirds because people were just terrified to have other people yeah. in their homes. Yeah. And then different people, you know, we had to follow very special protocols and making sure that everybody in the company was up to date on the protocols, making sure they were following the protocols because there were one or two that just absolutely refused. I'm not wearing a mask. Well, if you're not wearing a mask, you can't go in the house. The only thing you can do are outside undergrounds. I said, but even that you've got to have a mask on as of the mandates right now. It, it's just, um, it, it's, it, I hate to keep using the word roller coaster, but that's honestly what it's been is up and down, up and down, up and down since 2020. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm really hoping that things will start to level out on a more positive basis, but with the economy and the election and everything else going on, I think a lot of people are very scared right now. Um, and you're seeing a lot of people holding off because of interest rates. They don't know what's going to happen. Uh, the economy's not the greatest. So you're still, even though it's four years later, you're still having to navigate just in a different, just in a different realm. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting point. Cause I, I remember um, my grandpa uh, who's who's passed away 20 years or something at this point. Um, I'm curious if he was alive during the Great Depression or if he was born recently after the Great Depression, but he was forever scarred by the impacts of the Great Depression. So like loose change in the house, right? Like they would squirrel, they put it in a jar, they put it on top of the fridge. Never do you touch the money because you never know when you're going to need it. Uh, food, they'd always have like canned food for days. Um, like, why do you need that much cream corn? You don't need that much cream corn. Um, the, the point I'm making is when something is deeply traumatic on a society, 
that totally leaves ripples, right? And um, unfortunately, unfortunately, the way that the United States dealt with everything related to COVID, it caused such a fracturing and such a hyper like politicization of what's happening. And so, so yeah, you do have people who are like legitimately concerned and they had health reasons. Obviously in your case, you had someone close to you that that passed away as a result of it. And that's awful. And all those fears and traumas are deeply wounded and deeply in place. And it won't be in our lifetimes (laughs) when those wounds go away. Right. And then you have other people who like choose a whole other, like, uh, a whole other way of response. And, and it wasn't like COVID is not a thing. It was like, now it's an anti thing. It's like, okay. So totally in both ways though, the effects are going to live far beyond 2020. Um, and that's, I think, uh, it, what's even weirder to think about. And I'm, I'm actually kind of curious. I haven't heard much research yet, but my kids, how old were they when COVID happened? They were, they were still in grade school. So somewhere between before fifth grade, I don't quite remember right now, but when the school shut down and everything was like virtual learning and I understand the schools, this is not a critique of the school system. They did what they were trying to do and no one knew what they were doing, but the impact on what it is for a kid to be socially isolated in a time in their lives and they need to be socially around other kids and then being forced to like use curriculum that's digital instead of like books that are paper and like the, the whole thing we're going to be seeing the impacts of of how we responded as a country to COVID in their lifetimes when they're adults and they're contributing members of society of like how how did they learn to cope and adapt i'm i'm really curious but as a leader uh for you during that time when you look back obviously it was very up and down it was very chaotic it sounds like do you feel like going through that that season not that it's over, but maybe the the most chaotic and disruptive elements of that season are hopefully are behind us. Do you feel like you can look back at the now and feel like there are elements of going through that struggle that made you a better leader, a better employer, a better company? Or do you feel like you were just kind of punched in the face over and over and over without anything to show for it? There was a point where I was punched in the face over and over and over and over. And there were a lot of changes and things that happened 21, 22. Um, A lot of reality checks. I knew that I had to make changes both myself personally as a leader, as well as changes within the company, as well as myself personally. Um, your company is only as good as the people leading the ship. Oh, totally. And if I'm doing something that is tearing it down, then I need to fix it. So Mm. it was, it was a lot. There was a lot of processes, but I think we've had a huge learning curve and it has made us better. Uh, very much appreciate the customers helped implement a lot of quality control, um, customer service. Retrospectively, I, I think it's made me better. I think it's made my people better. Do I ever want to go through this again? Oh, heck no. <laughs> no, I, I hope this is far behind us. And I, I hope that we can all start moving forward. And going through that time, seeing all of the businesses that were failing, I almost honestly felt guilty because I was essential service and I could stay working. And I'm seeing all these other companies that weren't essential services, that weren't allowed to be open, people filing bankruptcy, people losing their companies, people losing their jobs, their homes, their cars, being homeless, losing their children. I just hope we have turned the corner and we can finally start rebuilding and put it behind us. Yeah. And I think, I think it's really well said. I think, uh, 
how to say this, to make this maybe a, a unitarian sort of uh, concept, like the idea of if we can work together to build bridges instead of like attack each other, mm-hmm. um, if we can fight for something instead of against something. Right. Um, right. I think, I think we can find a lot of healing as a country, as a society. Uh, because yeah, I think, um, it was difficult. There, there were upsides, right? Like there's, what's the old adage, uh, uh, a smooth water, never a skilled sailor makes or something along those lines, right? Basically you never learn the captain of ship. Well, if you're always out in smooth waters, like you need the storms, you need the chaos and 2020 for businesses provided the chaos. Um, not wishing that on anyone, like nobody wants to go through that, but here we all were all thrown it together without an option. So um, it either made us better and gave us skills and rise up to the challenge or uh, it kind of changed our, our path in other ways. So yeah, if we can all work together, put it behind us, I think that's a really good set. If somebody is listening to your story and they're, they're inspired by kind of your journey going from, from like, back in the sheet metal days to then working with your ex-husband in the HVAC world and then getting into accounting and then finding yourself, cool, I'm going to do op stuff. And oh, no, by the way, I'm owning a company. Surprise. Decision made in only five minutes. Um, but they love they love the passion, the drive, the commitment to kind of carry things through. What what sort of encouragement might you give to somebody who like wants to have the success and determination of outcome that you have had? Do your homework, Mm. research, know what you're getting into. Talk to people that have been in the business for years. If you don't have any hands-on experience, get the hands-on experience because you're going to need it. But follow your dreams. Um, Did my life take a total different trajectory than what I had ever anticipated? Holy Lord, Jess, I thought I would be a neonatal nurse or a trauma nurse. Here I am. I own a plumbing company, but it, it did not come without a lot of prayer. Trust me. I I spent more time on my knees praying, making sure that I was making the right decision. And by the grace of God, he made everything fall into place. All of the financing company was paid off in under four years. Uh, Don't give up. Mm. Uh, Surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. I, I've I I try to surround myself with people areas where I'm weak and know that I'm weak. I surround myself with people that are strong, and yeah. never never think that you know it all, and never think that because you own the company you are the here all be all. You learn every day. Be grateful for something every day. Keep a gratitude journal. Uh, Because when stuff gets hard like COVID, you can look back and see at how much you've been blessed and what you have to be thankful for, what you have to look forward to. Um, But follow your dreams. But to be wise about it. Do your homework. Get with people that have been in the industry. Find a mentor. I, I've, I've got a couple, actually, uh, not only in the business, but I have a business coach uh, that helps keep me established, keep me firm when I have questions or I'm faced with a situation that I've never been faced with before. or I don't know how to proceed. I've got enough very wise people around me to help me make qualified decisions so I don't screw up and make a mistake. But you know what? Sometimes by making those mistakes, by failing, by falling and refusing to give up, you pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you get back up and you keep on going. You do not give into defeat. Do not give into defeat. Um, Preach. I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to quit, but I just, there's something inside of me that just won't let me do it. Failure is a wonderful teacher. Yes, Uh, it is. 
It really is. Now, it's a different thing if you make the same mistake a couple different times. Well, that's a different conversation, maybe, but make a mistake, failing, learning, and doing it again. Yeah. I, I like, I tell people on our team, like, as long as you make a different mistake the next time, you're all good. Like, make a different mistake next. They're mistakes if you keep repeating them. They're learning yeah. experiences and, and challenges if you've learned from them and you've taken what you've learned and moved forward so you don't make the same mistake over and yeah. over and over. That's, that's just refusing. That's, that's what did Albert Einstein, was it Einstein that said um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results? Yeah, well, it's a tribute to him, but I don't know if it is. But yeah, over and over and over again, and you refuse to listen, and you refuse to change the behavior that caused that mistake in the first place. You're just yeah. insane. Which, yeah. if you're owning a business, you might very well be insane. Let's just call it what it is, right? Like, <laughs> true, most, true, preach it, preach it. Yeah, there, there's not a whole lot of normies that are like running businesses, like crazy in some ways yeah when you um, put your when you when you're completely debt free your house is paid everything's paid off and you're over 50 and you're suddenly faced with owning a business and you put everything you've got into that business your retirement that you've worked your entire life and everything else i have been called crazy before <laughs> um I think sometimes my, my guardian angel needs a guardian angel and my my parents deserve more medals than they've got chest yeah. to pin it on for uh, supporting me in all my endeavors and being being my support network and encouraging me. My my family well, have been I'm there. Glad, I'm glad that you have not given up and that you have surrounded yourself by people who believe in you who encourage you to be better who give you a space to fail and to learn and as a result you are you're building a company you're impacting lives of your team but it's cool like you're you're empowering your team to impact the lives of the community you serve so that very well done if somebody mary wants to reach out to you talk more about your story maybe schedule a shop visit the next time that they're in charlotte what's the best way for somebody to reach out to you just call me 704-559-5288 or we've got a, a Facebook page all about the pipes. We've got a website, um, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash all about the .com. You can reach out to me there. Best thing to do is just, just pick up the phone and call me. Uh, we're, we're very easily found. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to anybody. I'll talk your ear off as if you can't tell. No, this is awesome. And every time I hear all about the pipes, I totally, I, I'm sure it's by design of like, all about the pipes, all the pipes. Like it's totally just wants to. We have that on our face, on our, on our, on our website. The man who designed my website did it all about the pipes, the pipes, yeah. the pipes, all about the pipes. So if you want to hear that under all about the pipes, just go to my website, all about the pipes.com. Mary, it was awesome having you on. Keep up the great work. I'm cheering you on. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much. Have a great day. This episode was hosted by Ryan Redding, author of the book on digital marketing for plumbing and HVAC contractors and founder of Leveragey, the digital marketing solution for serious home service companies. You can subscribe to Blue Collar CEO on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Visit us online at bluecollar.ceo and find us on Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another awesome episode. See you soon.